From home robots run from AI that will do all your chores, to dinosaurs that are run by AI, we have a lot of fun AI news topics to talk about in this week's AI news segment. And if you enjoy AI, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Let's start off with OpenAI. They are laying the groundwork for a massive IPO, one of the largest of all time, $1 trillion. That's what they are valued at from the IPO rumors, leaks that are coming out. OpenAI also opened up Sora to other countries such as US, Canada, Japan, South Korea, and you do not need an invitation. So now you can just go to sora.chatgpt.com and you can create an account and you can start generating fun video clips. There's also the app that you can get on the App Store. So if you have an Apple device, you can download and use the app this way. So if you wanna upload your own face, it's gonna ask you to do some things like, hey, can you smile and tilt your head and all this kind of stuff? And you can actually have it clone and make videos of yourself. If you're an Android user, that is coming in the near future. That's what the latest rumors are. And we should have an Android app for Sora soon. But right now you need iOS. If you're on Android, you have to go to the web browser and that's how you can get access. Google did a number of updates on AI Studio and I have a whole video about this, but the big one is vibe coding. So say we're on AI Studio, like we are here on the left, we can go to build and you're going to see build with Gemini. We can click the I'm feeling lucky button and you're going to see different things that pop up as alongside the different apps that they will use that Google's offering from an AI perspective. Say we want to build this app here, which is a mobile app wallpaper builder. We can literally just click build. And on the left, it's going to have our prompts. On the right, it's going to show us our code and the preview. And from what we've seen on Twitter, and if you dive into like my longer video about this topic, I go a little bit more in depth, but this tool should soon have access to backends like Firebase, as well as authentication, again, using Firebase. Now we have our app built called Vibe Wall, and you can see here we have a prompt we can enter. We can decide the layout or landscape we want, and we're going to leave it just at its phone. We can hit generate, and it is going to generate our wallpaper for us based off our prompts. And we built an entire wallpaper app that quickly, that easily, and we can see all the different options that we have. So we can actually click view and you can see it, we can download it, we can also remix and say, okay, can we modify this one here? We can also go and view all of our code, we can download it, we can upload to GitHub, and a lot, lot more. What are your thoughts on vibe coding and this whole push towards it? I kind of like it, and I said that as a programmer because I think it's really cool. I can now build like demo apps that I want to build before that would take a long time, but now I can build them a lot quicker, and that's always cool. And when the demo app gets stuck, I still need to know how to code, so my job's kind of secure for now at least. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Adobe has some new experimental AI tools that they can edit an entire video off of one frame. So say you went through and you modified like one frame, it would transfer that modification over to every other frame in your video. These experiments are called sneaks. Imagine you can manipulate the lighting in a frame and then that lighting actually gets adjusted throughout, which is pretty cool. And then you can also like modify audio and mispronunciations and all that kind of fun stuff. And I'm all for tools that make our lives easier. Users can also insert objects into a video by like drawing where they want it to be. And then they can describe with an AI prompt what they want that to be in their video. So it's gonna like overlay it into the video and it's really cool. Canva also had our biggest product drop yet. It's called the Canva Creative Operating System. So it's supposed to be like an entire platform where you can modify and create literally anything all of Canva's tools in one nice package. Canva is actually working on their own models for this. And they basically, Canva's actually working on their own models for this. And Canva actually started out using diffusion models where they put in someone to put in a prompt and then it would generate an image based off the prompt that was given. And they quickly realized people want to take that and modify it further and then modify that further and keep going. So instead of just like a still image, they are trying to make layers of modifications so people can extend the modifications even further. At least that's my understanding from their press release. And if I'm like completely off base, drop a comment down below, let me know. But from my best understanding is they're trying to make it so people can modify images or modify really anything 
in a layer-based format so you can modify things easier and quicker and just keep going. They've also included new things like new timelines, and you can see what that looks like here. And if we keep going down, you can see like a magic video where you can upload a clip, describe what you want your video to be like, and then you can just see it come together as a video ready to be posted on social media. So they have like really cool AI sprinkled across their platform to make your life easier. So prior in the year, they also released Canva Sheets and Canva Code, and now they are both connected together, which makes a lot of sense that you can use code with Sheets. So it seems like the Canva operating system experience is just kind of connecting all the massive number of products they have together to make you work easier, faster, and better. While ChatGPT is saying, hey, we want $1 trillion for our IPO, NVIDIA has hit a $5 trillion valuation. If your website can handle support 24-7 without hiring additional staff. If you go to Elf site, you can come down and you can create a widget. You can enter in your own URL. It's going to analyze your website. And in just 10 to 15 seconds, you're going to have your own custom virtual assistant that your customers can start talking to. Now we have our own Franklin AI Assistant chatbot that we can talk to and we can just one click, hey, what are the newest AI tools available? It is able to look through the website and spit out the information from the Franklin AI website and you can use Elfsight to generate answers for your potential customers so they don't leave your website they can ask questions get answers and purchase things on the left here we can add my own custom question like do i do collaborations with an answer i can hit done so now if we come in and talk to our chatbot someone asks hey does franklin do collabs it is able to not just pull information from the website but it's able to pull information from the question and answers that we put in and it's that simple that easy and you can fully customize this in seconds so we have greetings so we can put welcome messages and quick replies we can change the button icons down to the theme it's like having a support agent that never sleep it's just awake 24 hours seven days a week working for you check it out in the description below complexity has a brand new tool that allows you to search for patents with just natural language and it's completely free and open to everyone and while i was going to show you the perplexity patent search actually working i don't have access to it yet so i guess it's still rolling out if you don't see it well don't panic because it's rolling out elon musk has long disliked wikipedia so he's created a very original idea called grokopedia and you can see here we're reading about this on wikipedia but no let's actually go to grokopedia so you can see how it works so this is grokopedia version 0 0.1 and they currently have 885,000 articles available so let's actually just search wikipedia and let's see what comes up i know a lot of these articles have been scraped like word for word from wikipedia so as much as he dislikes it he's literally taking information from wikipedia so Anyway, this is Grokopedia. You can see how it looks. So we have like our quick links on the left so we can like quickly jump to whatever part we want and we get a nice wall of text about Wikipedia. Let's try another one. So if you start searching and say we want to search for Elon Musk, so you can actually see it gives us suggested results. So we can click Elon Musk and here we go with another wall of text. I do like that Wikipedia breaks it up and makes it actually look nice, but Hey, we have another option that was literally made by AI, apparently, even though, like, again, lots of this data is literally pulled from Wikipedia itself. All right, on to the home robot Neo. This friendly guy here that you can see on the left is a robot called Neo, and you can actually pre-order it right now. So if we go to order now, you can see the options. We can pick some different colors, and then we have options between standard, where we will pay a $500 a month fee, or we can do early access and pay $20,000 all in one go, and we will have access to Neo. But what does Neo actually do? And that is the question, and the answer is it's hard to say for sure. So they put up this video here where Neo going around cleaning the house, vacuuming, doing laundry. You can access it from your phone and you can see like exactly what it's doing. It'll go to the wall, it'll self-charge, it basically does it all. However, it actually does very little. So from the video that they showed, there's only like two scenes where the robot's actually doing stuff itself autonomously, where it picks up the glass and brings it back to the counter and it goes and answers the door, which I can already just talk to Google and have it open the door. But anyway, the 
The whole point is Neo is reliant on remote operators, like a whole pro mode where you're going to have to set up a session. You're going to invite someone who works for Neo at Neo, who's going to use a VR headset and remote access into the Neo to do the chores for you at your house. Think about the dystopian take on that. So people are going to be working, cleaning your house using a robot, just wild times ahead. But it makes a lot of sense, right, from a data perspective, because they need data and they need real life situations. And every house is different and what people want is different. And by putting this robot in houses, and apparently it's going to come up next year, and uh, that's we'll see, time will tell. But they need to collect data to be able to train the robot to do it autonomously because the AI models just aren't there yet. So it's an interesting take out and an interesting approach how they're going forward with this. It's a very interesting approach because they're literally selling you the product and then that's going to help them recoup some of the money to train the product to hopefully, in theory, make it update to make your product better. Does that sound familiar? Yes, Tesla did the same with full self-driving, which technically does not exist. I know you can argue that there's robo-taxi, but again, limited area and not on the cars that people bought like a decade ago with full self-driving. But it's all about that training data that customers are purchasing early. So what's your thoughts on this whole like Neo situation? Are you going to be pre-ordering one or have you already? I'm just really curious to know what you think. I was thinking about it like what if I limit the robot to just my main floor, for example, and I said, hey, your job is to clean up the living room and clean up the kitchen. And by the way, it can't cook yet. It, it can clean up, but it can't cook. But let's say I told them to clean the kitchen and clean the main floor and I had people remote in. What really are they accessing more than Google has already based off my cameras? So I don't know, just something I've started thinking about. And I'm like, okay, it's not a terrible idea as long as I limit the data and limit where it can go within the house. But then again, that's very expensive for something that's not going to be functional across the entire house. So I don't know, it just got me thinking about this whole topic and love to know what your thoughts are down below. And lastly, we have AI powered dinosaurs. So yeah, you heard that right. We didn't learn anything from, from Traffic Park. Well, at least they're not real. Okay. So let's just zoom in on this little clip here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So let's hit play and you can see here is our little dinosaur and you can see the robot that's under the hood for the dinosaur itself. So just a little robot that has some AI built in. It can like hop, jump around and it has a dinosaur costume on it, making it look really, really good. Is there any AI topics that I missed this week that I should have covered? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Again, I cover AI on a daily basis. Like the video if you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more of it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with another AI video. AI tools, AI news, AI prompts you can use. It's all for free, just come and see. At FranklinAI.com where you're meant to be.